The Albanian Revolt of 1910 was reaction to the new centralization policies of the Young Turk Ottoman government in Albania. It was the first of a series of major uprisings. Rebels were supported by the Kingdom of Serbia. New taxes levied in the early months of 1910 led to Isa Bolatini's activity to convince Albanian leaders who had already been involved in a 1909 uprising to try another revolt against the Ottoman Empire. The Albanian attacks on the Ottomans in Pristine and Ferozovic, the killing of the Ottoman commander in Ipek and the insurgents' blocking of the railway to Scorpio at the Kakanik Pass led to the Ottoman government's declaration of martial law in the area. After two weeks of fierce fighting the Albanian forces withdrew to the Drenica region, whereas the Ottoman army took possession of the cities of Prizren and Yakova. The Ottomans retook Ipek on 1 June 1910 and two months later they entered Shkoda. The reprisals against the Albanian population included several summary executions and the burning of many villages and properties. Many schools were closed, and publications in the Albanian alphabet, which had been approved two years earlier in the Congress of Monastir, were declared illegal. Journalists and publishers were fined or sentenced to death. Events during the first months of 1910, Isabola tried to coordinate forces for a new insurrection by visiting the Albanian clans, which had taken refuge in Montenegro after the failure of a previous minor uprising in 1909. In the meantime the new governor, Masabe, introduced a new tax on commodities, which immediately became highly unpopular. Albanian leaders held two other meetings in Ipek and Ferozovic, where they took the oath of Bessa to be united against the new Ottoman government policy of centralization. Forces led by Isa Bolatini attacked the Ottoman forces in Pristina and Ferozovic. While the commander of Ottoman forces in Peck was killed by the local population, the Ottoman government declared martial law and sent a military expedition of 16,000 men led by Shekhet Turgut Pasha who went to Skopje in April 1910. At the same time 3,000 Albanians under Idris Seferi blocked the railway to Skopje at the Kakanik Pass. They captured a train conveying soldiers and military supplies to the Ottoman garrison of Pristina, disarmed the soldiers and held the supplies. The Ottoman forces attacked the Kakanik Pass but the resistance given there by the Albanians led by Idris Seferi made it clear that the 16,000 Ottoman forces were insufficient to crush the rebellion so their numbers increased to 40,000 men. After two weeks of fierce fighting, the Ottoman forces captured the Kakanik Pass and attacked the Albanian forces led by Isa Bolatini and Hassan Budakova, which meanwhile were blocking the Ferozovic prison road to Karaleva Pass. Superior in numbers, the Ottoman forces tried at first a frontal attack but the stiff resistance offered made them change their tactics. They made a pincer movement, trying to encircle the Albanian forces in Karaleva Pass. After three days of fighting the Albanian forces withdrew to the Drenica region. Ottoman forces entered Prizren in the middle of May 1910. They proceeded to Yakova and Ipek where they entered on June 1, 1910. By government orders part of the force proceeded in the direction of Skatari, while another column marched toward the Debra region. The first column marching to Skatari managed to capture the Maureen Pass, after fighting with the Albanian forces of Gash, Krasnik and Bytyc areas, led by Zekir Halalili, Abdullah Hoxha, and Shaban Binaku. Ottoman forces were stopped for more than 20 days in the Agri Pass, from the Albanian forces of Shale, Shosh, Nikij and Murta areas led by Priel Tuli, Mehmet Shapendi, and Marish Delia. Unable to repress their resistance, this column took another way to Skatari, passing from the Puk region. On July 24, 1910, Ottoman forces entered the city of Skatari. During this period martial courts were put in action and summary executions took place. A large number of firearms were collected and many villages and properties were burned by the Ottoman army. Aftermath 
Although the numbers of the Ottoman forces were now up to 50,000, they controlled only the lowlands and the cities, and failed to take control of the mountainous regions. At the request of the Ottoman commander Mehmet Shekip Pasha, the Ottoman government declared the abrogation of the Lekka Dukagini Code, which was the mountain law of the Albanian clans. Some Albanian clans went to seek refuge in Montenegro, requesting an amnesty from the Ottoman government and the return of the conditions obtaining before the rebellion. This was not accepted by the Ottoman government, which also declared the prohibition of the Albanian alphabet and books published in it. Albanian language schools were declared illegal, and possessing a book in Albanian letters became a penal act. Strong through numbers and position, the Ottoman expedition continued its march towards central and southern Albania imposing the new prohibitions. Albanian schools were closed and publications in the Latin alphabet were declared illegal. A number of journalists and publishers were fined or sentenced to death while the entry of Albanian books published outside the Ottoman Empire was prohibited. After these events, Albania became a wasteland for Albanian patriots, and Albanian culture was fully oppressed. One year later, Sultan Mehmed V visited Pristina and declared an amnesty for all who had participated in the revolt, except for those who had committed murder.